A couple weeks ago, I got a comment from a subscriber named Annabelle who said, Heads up, Popcross, you're about to get a whole bunch of new requests for a My Seeing Monsters episode because of the release of a creature called the Hyehehe. And Annabelle was absolutely right. Lots of people have been asking me to give the Hyehehe my fantasy beast treatment, so I figured that was a perfect excuse to do a fourth episode of My Singing Monsters as fantasy beasts. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go. Hit like if you want, subscribe if you feel like, but either way, Enjoy the show! Since accepting that the group of beast chroniclers I met, who refer to themselves as the monster handlers, are more than capable of taking on the task to turn the defensively vicious monsters of song back to their once peaceful, melodious state, I have been much more relaxed about the trajectory my world is on in terms of becoming a more harmonious place. I made an accord with them to meet every month or so to discuss how they are progressing and if I could be of any more aid to them. We just met up last eve and they told me tales of their most recent discoveries, and astoundingly they managed to find a monster of song that none of them had ever heard tales of before. And a very strange one at that. They claimed to have come across it while seeking another creature along a volcanic mountain base, and were awoken in the night by a cackling laughter. They spotted what they believed to be a large werewolf higher up in the hills, though they could only make out its silhouette and it soon fled with a menacing chuckle. The following night they awoke to a rustling sound in their camp. When they emerged from their tents, something was running off into the trees, and laid out on the ground was their own bestiary, with a new, sloppily written entry added on a creature called a mischievous hyahina. It described the creature as the overlord of all monsters of song, and claimed it was far smarter and more vocally superior than every other creature of its kind. The handlers are still uncertain if some other mischievous chronicler snuck into their camp to make this addition, or if somehow the creature itself added this. Still, they did over the following nights get more sightings of the creature, and found that, while clearly bizarre, it seemed to already be returned to its musical ways, as they could often hear a sound like an organ playing forth, seemingly from the creature's three large ears. They have theories that it may be a beast once residing on a mythical island described in the Hymns of the Colossal's religious texts, but it may be some time before they can actually confirm this to be the case. Now obviously this was the My Singing Monster that I've gotten requested the most recently, and I was really excited to do it and really lean into a werewolf sort of look. And I also tried to go with a leaner, more nimbler sort of look. I have a tendency to draw arms and legs a little bit on the thicker side, so I tried to go with a thinner sort of look, almost a bit more like I was drawing one of my demon creatures or something like that. I actually go for a little bit more of a cryptid kind of vibe with some of the drawings in this episode, the first one and the third one specifically, and I think that's really cool. It may make them feel a little bit less grand than some of the other creatures in this series, but I think it does add some nice variety, and I like how these turn out. One thing that I do change in this drawing just as it's finishing up, actually after the screen recording, is I end up getting rid of the moon and just redoing the stars. I tried fading out the moon in the background to make it feel like it's a bit farther back to have it draw less attention away from the creature, messed around with a few different things and eventually I was just like, you know what, I like this element, but I want more of the attention focused on the actual creature, so I ended up getting rid of it. I think it could have worked, but I do like it better without the moon. The reason the monster handlers were in the region where they spotted the mischievous Hyahina was to seek two other monsters of song, said to be in that same territory, one of which was not difficult to locate as it is a beast that cannot traverse on its own. It is called a potted bellow beast, and it has an unusual anatomy. It somewhat resembles a Venus flytrap blended with a dragon, having some plant and some draconic elements to it. The creature often grows in the stumps of massive trees after they've fallen, and will usually sprout two heads with large sharp teeth and no eyes. In the days of the Hymns of the Colossals, they'd sing a beautiful tune in harmony with itself to lure other creatures and beings to it, though not to consume them, but to entertain them, and trust that someone pleased by its song would feed it. That, of course, has not been the case for quite some time. 
This creature had been found as a sapling by a man from the nearby villages named Seymour. He was a bit of an odd man who'd actually given the creature's two heads two names, Audrey and Audrey II, and he had been feeding it himself to try and appease its now violent tendencies. He'd tried bringing others to see it, but the beast had immediately attempted to devour any of his allies who tread too close. His village was demanding they burn the creature alive to rid themselves of it. When word got around to the handlers, who were thankfully able to come and play their instruments to the creature and encourage it to return to the musical, peaceful ways of its ancestors. The creature did eagerly begin singing after some time of hearing their music. The village thought the sound of its song to be so wonderful that they all agreed, so long as it hurt no humans, they'd continue to feed it, to have it nearby to continue hearing its wonderful music. Now the Potbelly is one of the My Singing Monsters that I've had most requested since I started doing this series. And I really like doing it. It was another one that was on the simpler side and I didn't really change it up that much, but it was fun playing with the elements that were there. I did try and angle us as if we're looking up at it to make it feel a little bit bigger, because I knew a, a plant creature in a stump could end up looking like it's kind of on the small side, like it would it would be shorter than me. Looking at this, I think I did a fairly decent job of that. I would say, at a glance, maybe this thing seems like it's, I don't know, 15 feet tall? Maybe that's just me, I hope it comes across that way. In terms of additions, I added some purple saliva to it, I added a bit more texture, and I added the Venus flytrap sort of teeth to its mouths just to give it a little bit more of a menacing kind of mouth. And then with the lore, I couldn't resist working in a uh, Little Shop of Horrors reference with Audrey too. If anyone got that reference, awesome, I love that movie. Anyway, like I said, this one's on the simpler side, but I think that works well for what this creature is. As usual, all the art from this episode will be up as posters on my Teespring store, and if you want the inks from this, as well as access to art a day before an episode comes out, and access to a bonus Design Notes podcast, where I talk more about my art and writing process and give advice on art and writing, you might want to consider supporting the Popcraft Studios Patreon. Thank you so much to everybody who's already on there. Posters and Patreon linked in the description. Now, the Potted Bellow Beast was but one of the monsters of song the handlers sought in this region. The creature they admitted to being more eager to find was one called a Talking Ram Runner. This breed was rare even in the earliest days of the Hymns of the Colossals, and was practically considered to be legendary. It, and a few like it, uniquely had the ability to sing actual words that were fully coherent lyrics, understood by any who heard them and spoke the same language. Strangely, the creatures were not able to carry conversations in these languages, but they were not simply repeating phrases they had heard. They were genuinely able to construct unique sentences in their songs that reflected a clear understanding of the language that they sang. Anyhow, the monster handlers heard from a traveler that had attempted to traverse these regions, who claimed that a bipedal ram monster had tackled its horns into his horse when he tried to make his way up the base of the mountain. He was forced to run off and barely escaped with his life. The handlers recognized the description of this creature and knew they had to be cautious when seeking it, as it was particularly intelligent, even if in an enraged state. They found themselves halfway up the mountain when they heard the thudding of footsteps charging towards them. The creature was indeed approaching and was set to hurl them straight off the cliffs, so they had to scatter in different directions while scrambling to unsheath their instruments. One of the handlers had their instruments struck from their hand, and they were grabbed by the beast that was about to hurl them off the mountain, when the others were able to start playing their music to calm it. A rather intimidating start to the night turned into one of the greatest musical performances they'd ever partaken in, as the talking ram runner sang beautifully in harmony with their tunes. Now I think this one's my favorite of the episode. It's hard to say, I'm pretty happy with how everything in this episode's turned out, but this one I, I did, as I said earlier, leaned into a cryptid sort of vibe, like a little bit more. I actually looked up images of a chupacabra, but didn't end up using much inspiration from that. Beyond that, the main inspiration I was taking was from actual rams. I, because of the talker's horns, I looked up images of rams to get an idea of how to do the horns a little bit more realistically, though I didn't really do them that much more realistically. And then I looked at the eyes, and goats and rams have those weird, 
There's probably a name for them, but the eyes that, like, the pupil is sort of a long, flat shape. And, and then I also saw how Ram's eyes kind of sit on their heads a, a little bit farther stuck out. And I took inspiration from that to pop the eyes out a little bit more. And I think that does give this thing more of a menacing, intimidating, creepy, borderline supernatural kind of vibe. And this does almost look like it would fit better as uh, my singing monsters as SCPs creature or something, fitting into my SCPs series, because it does lean into the kind of creepy sort of look a little bit more. But I think that works. I, it, again, I think that just adds a little bit more variety to this series, and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And I hope everybody who's requested the talker likes it as well. These were the only tales of interactions the handlers had with actual creatures since our last encounter, and I of course expressed great gratitude for the work they were doing, but before parting ways, they also informed me that they had met another chronicler, who claimed to have found a path down to the fabled caverns where the Woo Beasts lie. These are the creatures claimed to be spawned from the creations of the dark sorcerer Wu Barox. They are said to be trapped underground, though if this chronicler was telling the truth, there may be a way out for them soon. She stated that the tunnels she traveled down were too small for the beast to escape through themselves, but that she was able to, from a distance, study some of these creatures, and believes they may not be as threatening as some suggest. One that she watched for the longest was what she referred to as a contorting dracodal. It was a drake that was able to bend and twist its body dramatically, almost as if it had no spine, though she didn't believe this to be the actual case. Much of the time it walked about on its front claws, with its legs and thick tail dangling in the air above its head. As is to be expected from Monsters of Song, it was able to play music, and was doing so as she observed it. Its tail would light up in bioluminescent pulses, and as it did, notes would ring out that she likened to that of the hissing plasmagast, which I've had multiple encounters with now. It was of course somewhat shocking to hear confirmation that the Woo Beasts did indeed play music, and were doing so as the handler observed them. Most monsters of song that have returned to their musical ways are quite peaceful and pleasant. This did give a fair degree of hope that these creatures, the Woo Beasts, may already have found peace, in a way that many monsters of song on the surface world are still in search of. Pixelotl, another of the creatures that has been recommended a bunch of times, and I knew it was going to be a fun one to work with, and a weird sort of pose. I, I do like how the pose ended up turning out, but I do have some weird nitpicks with this one that make it, well, I do still like how it turned out, I think my least favorite of the episode. And part of the problem is I feel like I over-textured this one. Now, to be fair, I have said that about drawings before and had people say that the drawing I was talking about was their favorite of the episode. Specifically, I think with my My Hero Academia Kaiju episode, I remember thinking one of those I'd over-textured and over-textured the environment. But anyway, to draw more attention to the creature's head, I could have had this amount of texture that's on its head, and then lessened the amount of texture for the scales on its arms and its back, and that could have helped focus the image a little bit more on the head of the creature. But then the other thing is a little bit harder to explain, which is the creature is standing too close to the edge of the cliff for me. Like, for some reason that I can't exactly put my finger on, I feel like this would look better if the creature was standing a bit farther from the edge, closer to us, and I, I'm not exactly sure why I feel that way. Maybe it's some kind of weird psychological trick that since this creature is standing on its hands and could be considered a bit less balanced, it might seem as though it's about to fall backwards off the cliff. I don't know why that's it, it's just I can't really put my finger on why I feel like it's standing too close to the edge. Overall though, I do still like this one. The only thing I really added beyond texturing it more and making the anatomy a little bit more quote unquote realistic is I added a scorpion tail to the end. I don't really know why, I mean I'm making things a little bit more monstrous in this so I thought that could be a cool addition. But overall still very pleased with this drawing and I think it's a good one to end the video on. So I hope you all like it.
If you're new here and liking my My Singing Monster series, you might want to check out some of my other stuff, like famous anime characters if they were in the Marvel Universe, or my recent Animals as Demons episode. But also, please keep the My Singing Monsters suggestions coming in the comment section below. I'm definitely open to doing a fifth round of this, or again, doing My Singing Monsters as something else. And besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a simple quote this time, but one that really rings true with me. Your old chapters do not define you. They empower you to create a new, beautiful story. I hope that's inspiring to someone out there. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.